Hey everyone, I'm Diana Davison, advocate for the falsely accused and wrongfully convicted. Now in Canada, we started the new year out with the destruction of yet another man's life, this time with the help of the CBC, our public broadcast corporation. I'm talking about Albert Schultz and Soul Pepper Theatre, which Schultz helped to build from a ragtag group of actors into a multi-million dollar arts community. Now, four women have launched lawsuits and a media campaign asking for about eight million of that, claiming sexual harassment and assault. The claims go back to the year 2000, when two of the women, Trish Fagan and Kristen Booth, were cast in Soul Pepper's production of Twelfth Night. They say that it was the role of a lifetime. Albert was Albert, and Soul Pepper was the place to be. Here's Trish. When she got her first big break at Soul Pepper, run by its huge star, Albert Schultz. And here's Kristen. When she landed her first role at Soul Pepper, she says it was like winning the lottery. Soul Pepper was the, the theater company to work with in the country. Except that's not true. Soul Pepper was founded just in 1998 only two years earlier, and no one knew if they were going to succeed. As reported in The Walrus, the founding members were selling hot dogs to raise money and begging for funding from all of their friends and family. In fact, 2000 was the worst year the company had, going into a deficit for the first and only time. Trish Fagan tells us, Mocking, ridiculing, um, belittling, um, and anger. Except... In 2005, Albert Schultz actually awarded Fagan the Artistic Director's Award of Excellence. It was quite the honor. So it was, it was frightening. It was utterly confusing and um, horrible. Again, I call bullshit. I know. Imagine that. After many not-too-great reviews, Albert actually gave Trish an award. Very confusing indeed. So how did Fagan recover from the humiliation of being given a prestigious award? Despite getting tepid reviews, basically saying that she needed vocal coaching, she often seemed like a stale piece of bread on stage, and she wasn't really good enough to carry a leading role. Well, she married Adam Peddle in 2006. They'd actually met way back in 2002, when Adam was a celebrated playwright, and by 2006, Adam was launching a strange radio show for the CBC called Afghanada. I call it strange because it was a CBC show, but yet they were made to do their own stunningly bad promotional videos on YouTube. Nevertheless, the show aired and won awards, finishing up at the end of 2011. And Adam quickly transitioned to executive producer on a successful show called Saving Hope. So Trish Fagan is married to a pretty powerful guy in the industry. And here's how they describe the start of their romance back in 2002. Because the play was a two-hander, it meant that Adam and I were the only two people at the opening night after party. So I guess you could say this was our first date. What happened? We sat in the paddock on Queen and Bathurst, slamming vodka sodas and talking about how happy we were to become such good friends during rehearsal. But let's just say it was loaded with subtext. After many a drink, I leaned across the table and gave Adam a sloppy kiss. But was Adam an impoverished playwright at the time? No. Adam was just coming off a commercial run of his play Zadie's Shoes at the Winter Garden Theatre, and so for the first time in his 20-something life, was rolling in it. There were cab rides and fancy meals, shopping sprees, and a whole lot of laughs. They laughed their way right through that money, but man, was it ever fun. So keep this in mind, because Trish, now in 2018, is going to tell the world that Albert Schultz owes her millions of dollars because, in hindsight, she can now see that she was struggling with depression, a vulnerable actress being preyed on by a powerful man. So let's get the snapshot from 2006. That's when Soul Pepper actually opened their first play in the Young Center. They finally had a permanent space and millions of dollars were now riding on what was still a very uncertain future. That's a lot of pressure on Albert when opening day came. From the National Post, May 1st, 2011. Looking back, on that opening night in 2006, just before the play was about to start, we had just spent five years building this theater. Someone in the audience said, 
Yay, Albert! And everyone in the audience stood up and gave a very lengthy standing ovation. All of my friends and cast members were backstage behind that wall, watching this on a monitor. When I went up and touched that brick wall, the minute I touched it, they touched the wall on the other side. That's become a tradition every time before we perform this play. When I touch that wall, there are 20 others behind it who helped build this place, touching it at the same time. So that's the true story of Albert Schultz and who he was back in 2006. Given what his friends are doing to him today, I want everyone to remember the real story. I want you to remember that Albert Schultz will never place his hand on that wall again. And I want you to know who did this to him. His life's work, his name, everything he believed in has been stolen from him. Stolen while the people who once loved him so much they reached out to touch his hand through the brick wall are just sitting by and watching it happen. In 2006, Trish Fagan's husband had launched his successful CBC radio show, which continued until December 2011. This is how Trish was spoken to in the interview on her husband's own show. I guess interestingly enough for you, I could also ask, who are you and who do you do? <laughs> um, well, I'm married to <laughs> Adam Peddle, who is one of the creators and writers on the, uh, on the show. Who do you do? All right, here's the next awkward moment. Get pregnant, go to theater school. Get go pregnant. to theater school, yeah. you'll probably get pregnant. Well, let's see how Adam talks about his own wife. And for fans of Afghanada, mm -hmm. tell them tell them about the, your baby mama. My baby mama is uh, Hannah, the actress who plays Hannah. Yep, so apparently Trish Fagan has gone from Albert giving her the Artistic Director's Award in 2005 to just being her husband's wife and being publicly called a baby mama on her husband's own show. No wonder she's depressed and angry. The CBC tells us this is how Trisha's career wound down. Fagan says she was worn down from the harassment and started turning down roles, severing all ties with Soul Pepper in 2013. But this is what Trish tells us in 2010. Often in theater, do you have any uh, plays going on right now that you'd like to plug? Well, not right now because I'm mostly, other than Afghanistan and a little bit of work here and there, mostly I'm just hanging out with Alice these days. Um, so taking a bit of time off, but I'll be doing Zadie's Shoes in 2011. Adam Peddle, Trish's husband, is now working on another show which he's probably pitched to the CBC. It's no wonder the CBC was given exclusive interviews by Adam's wife and her collaborators. Maybe CBC's Fifth Estate should have hired Adam to write their episode about his wife's lawsuit, because as it turned out, they only had enough to fill half the time slot. When you're a journalist and publishing material that will destroy a man's life, appropriate care should be taken. This episode cuts from allegations against Albert and Soul Pepper to footage from a story about firefighters that was actually aired back in November of 2015. With the vast resources of a public broadcaster and the seriousness of the accusations they're making, CBC apparently doesn't pay their staff enough to learn how to use a simple Google search. They've done nothing to research problems with the stories that these women are telling us, They've done nothing to inform the public. Our national broadcaster has been reduced to a tabloid. I'd say that this is theater at its best, but it's theater at its worst. I'm disgusted with the CBC and their lack of interest in the truth. This is nothing but a hit job. I don't know why Patricia Fagan is lying. Maybe she's lying to herself. I do know one thing, though. Soul Pepper was not a stable theater back in 2000, and by the time Albert Schultz had any power, Trish was married to a man who could have protected her. She wants us to believe she never spoke to her own husband, her baby daddy, who's been working with the CBC for over a decade. It's time to rewrite the ending 
of the crucible. This time, John Proctor needs to live. And every member of Soul Pepper who once reached out to touch Albert Schultz's hand through that old brick wall, they need to remember why they did that. They need to remember who Albert Schultz really is. If you don't, remember this. When they come for you, there'll be no one left to speak for you. I'm Diana Davison. I do better research than the Canadian Broadcast Corporation. And when they came for Albert Schultz, I spoke out.